Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Next question. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Larry Cavanaugh. I'm from uh, South Florida. South. I'm from Florida, South Florida. Jeb Bushland. I just want to say one thing. If Jeb Bush becomes governor of Fl uh, Florida, I will go to Havana in exchange for 10 <laughs> Cubans. <laughs> or 100. <coughs> It'll be safer there than in Florida if, if that, uh, you know, the drug baron gets in. Okay. The, the question uh, I have, Mr. Roosh, is do you think there's a possibility, since it looks like the oligarchy is still following the text of, uh, of uh, Dirty Birdie Russell, uh, if I may be so familiar, to use that term, I... <laughs> uh, so, do you... Th oh, so do you think that there's a chance that the oligarchists will use one of the Russellian uh, desires to nuke the world, uh, you know, to nuke them out like he wanted to do with Russia, uh, when this derivatives speculative bubble pops, taking with it the U.S. government in tow as a result of the fact there wouldn't be much liquidity around anymore, and before the bankruptcy chapters could be organized by the United States and other uh, providing Clinton would do it, and, and you would have a willing Congress. Before any bankruptcy or reorganization could be done, do you think that there is a chance that the oligarchists might pull some kind of a nuclear attack strategically around the world to subjugate it very quickly so there would be no time to organize this bankruptcy chapter? Uh, we, we have that. I, I have some indications of that. I've had one experience. Remember, the SDI is an example of that. This was an idea, it was a correct idea, which I had, and the occasion came on which the U.S. government asked me to consider conducting a back-channel discussion with the Soviet government as an exploratory discussion. I said, well, if I'd be willing to do it if I present my proposal for dealing with the economic crisis and the global strategic crisis together. That is the threat of first strike warfare, which was becoming quite. So at that point, I introduced the idea. The US government circles involved agreed to that arrangement. We conducted it. We sold the idea to the president and a handful of people. Over the objections of the Democratic Party leadership, the Bush people and Henry Kissinger and James Baker III, the Bush people. We got it through. We changed the course of history over the course of the 1980s, which is one of the reasons why they wanted to get rid of me. Be not because of the proposal itself, but because it showed I had too much power in this country to know how to influence the course of events with nothing but ideas and to produce a result which could change the strategic correlation of factors on the planet. Now, because I've had that experience and because I've made a few original, rather fundamental scientific discoveries of a related nature in the course of my life, I know what can be done with ideas. Let me just step one back on this and, and emphasize something I said in the opening panel. People talk about a lot of things and they evade the issue. The issue is the word Imago Dei means nothing other, nothing different than, nothing substituted for. That power of creative discovery which is typified by fundamental scientific discoveries, by discoveries of a type which cannot be represented by any syllogism, which cannot be represented by any formal logic, ideas which no Aristotelian could possibly ever understand. No Aristotelian has a soul or knows God if they're consistent Aristotelian, because that method makes it impossible. And if you read the ethics and politics of Aristotle, you see what that leads to. Every abomination imaginable 
is possible if you do not have a conception of man as distinct from the beast as in the image of God. And that which is in the image of God is the power to create in a way which no formalist, no formal mathematician of the generally accepted classroom type could possibly ever begin to understand. And therefore, do not try to reach cheap agreement with people on the question of the image of God. Well, I know what the image of God is. I'm in the image of God. They don't know what it is. And don't accept it from them. They don't know. You only know it if you know what creativity is, as I've described it. Now, if you know what creativity is, and understand that's the nature of man, that's the power of man to change man's behavior, is the source of man's power over the universe. Many people try to influence politics or influence events in other ways, except by creativity. And they will always fail because there's only one power for change which is efficient in this planet. And that is the power of creative discovery by the mind of a single individual. A power which is exemplified to any child by great classical poetry, by great classical music, by great classical drama by great classical painting and by the kind of discoveries of which I've been privileged to make a few in science. And it was because I understood that, because I had that experience which unfortunately is rare today, of having made successfully a fundamental scientific discovery in defiance, in successful defiance of generally accepted classroom mathematics, that I knew that as an individual, given the opportunity, we could change history with what became known as the announcement of the SDI. Not the implementation of the SDI, but the announcement of it, which is what changed history. When, uh, the reason I bring this in here and answer this question is, if one understands that, one is understands what I mean when I say that we have the ability to intervene now in the course of events immediately before us, to do what has never been done in history before, to effect immediate and direct transition from the collapse of a 500-year-old system, a global system, and with virtually without missing a step to make the transition to a complete new system. To build the bridge from hell to purgatory as if in a single day. We can do it. 